let the wind die down. Well, hello there. Now, I know New York very well. I know the port of New York very well. And uh, I actually flew out there just after 9-11. Um, I was due to fly out the following day after the, the incident with the World Trade Center where um, lots of people lost their lives. I think it was over 2,000 people lost their lives in one terror attack. Absolutely appalling. Anyway, when, when we got out to uh, New York and uh, we were, well, we weren't in New York, we were looking across to New, New York and we could see where the World Trade Centers were and uh, the, the smoke was still coming up from the from the craters in the ground that were left after the uh, after the incident, and it was very, very um, what's the word? It, it wasn't. It didn't. It felt you filled you with dread to know that these people could do these things to other humans. And anyway, uh, besides the point. So I, I do knew I do know the port of New York very well, and uh, I think it's only because of the fact that we had an incident in Baltimore that these stories are now coming to light. They're becoming more and more mainstream. Now, um, I think the Dali was a, a, a very unfortunate series of events which led to it hitting the, hitting the, the bridge itself. Um, but it's now becoming in, into the limelight, as it were. Um, so let's get on to this little story that we heard. There's a ship called the, the Quindal, which is another very large container ship. Now, as that was leaving... Uh, uh, Staten Island I believe it was on it actually went down a bit of the river and uh, it blacked out it didn't black out it browned out this simply means that a, a series of preferential trips went on the main switchboard which reduced their ability to uh, operate the ship uh, it would have lost the bow thrusters and would have lost probably some air conditioning and it may have lost the auxiliary blowers for the turbochargers on the main engine as i said before one, these engines need uh, extra air to to burn the fuel efficiently and uh, when you have a brownout you have to sacrifice something and those auxiliary blowers will be one of those things that um, that are sacrificial uh, and luckily this is now this is coincidence again uh, a, luck or, a lucky coincidence is that they had this incident right opposite a berth where they had tugboats uh, and eventually three tugboats actually came out to the Quindow to help it uh, get out of port uh, they took it round they came out into the main channel and uh, made sure it got to anchor properly so that's a it's another lucky escape. Now, this was another unfortunate accident. But because if it hadn't have been for the Dali, we would never have known about it. It wouldn't have made news because nothing happened. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, so we do we do know that there was three tugs involved, and uh, they they were all, it's back alongside now working cargo. So there's no no real story, nothing to see here, as they say. We're getting news now of the Dali's. Uh, fuel. They, they've tested the bunkers that were delivered to the Dali in Baltimore. Now, I'm not saying this is the case, but apparently lots of American fuel or American fuel that's supplied to ship is actually causing problems. But I, I think that the Dali was actually still burning its old bunkers. When I say bunkers, that just simply means a large quantity of fuel on board ship. And uh, we typically, on my ship, we might take somewhere in the region of about 80 to 90 tonnes of fuel, which, which is uh, cubic metres, really. It's uh, 70 cubic metres of fuel. And uh, we'll, we'll bunker that into our storage tanks all around the ship. Um, but the Dali would have taken on vast quantities of this residual fuel that I was telling you about but when you burn fuel on a ship you can't normally burn it until it's been tested you take samples as you're as you're loading the fuel or loading the bunkers on board ship you take a sample it's normally a representative sample i.e there's a there's a container that you would collect the oil in maybe it's a drip or constant stream it all depends on how much 
of the fuel you're taking on, how fast you fill this container. It might just be uh, a, an English gallon container of fuel, which you drip, drip, you know, one or two drips a, a, a minute uh, to fill it up. Say, say you're bunkering for several hours, um, it, it might only be a drip a second. Whereas if on our little ships, um, we're, we're bunkering for two or three hours, um, and it, it, it's literally three or four drips a minute just to fill it up. Uh, fill this container up and then then you, you sort it out into sample bottles and then you send the sample bottles off to a laboratory ashore to be tested and then when you get the results back you can use it on board ship now this is, they would have done that on the Dali uh, apparently they were using fuel from Korea uh, in the in the in the engines uh, when it left and the fuel that was on board that they had delivered was probably waiting for its samples to be tested they may not have even have left the port by the time the Dali left it's, you know what it's like with uh, ships agents uh, they don't do anything in a hurry and of course the post offices would have been shut I would imagine at 1 a.m. in the morning but yeah the, the fuel on board ship is tested before use uh, we only use gas oil on board ship which is a bit like the stuff that you would put in your cars and your trucks uh, that you see running up and down the road um, but on the big container ships, the fuel that we use will be black. The diesel fuel will be black and horrid and virtually invisible to see. You can't see through it. Um, but the, the main fuel that they use outside the port limits will be this thick, heavy residual fuel that you have to heat to somewhere in the region of about 130 degrees before you can inject it into the engine. It's incredibly hot. And uh, you don't want to have an oil leak <laughs> with those temperatures because simply it will burn. As soon as it hits you, it will burn. And, of course, it sticks as well. It's horrid. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's, that's all the news I've got today is that there's been another incident at sea. Again, this is a, a non-event. Nothing happened. So, yeah, I, I don't really think that uh, the Americans are being attacked at the moment. I think it's just purely coincident that the Dali had that collision with the bridge and unfortunately six people have lost their lives i do believe they've recovered a third body now so yeah just spare a thought for those poor people's family who still uh, don't know what's happened to their loved ones uh, anyway so that's about it so i'm going to wrap it up before i get on to uh, five minutes so just a short one and, and a big thank you to the people who sent me the information uh, and russell wouldn't have been able to put this out anyway Thanks very much, and I'll see you all on the next one. Goodbye.